Maryland's recognized. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Let me thank you and the ranking member for your, your leadership and your legislation, and, and thank all of you uh, for being here and for your efforts uh, to address um, this crisis uh, that we're facing. Uh, we know that drug cartels um, manufacture fake pills uh, resembling prescription medications that are laced with lethal doses of fentanyl and how they cunningly conceal fentanyl within other illicit drugs, knowingly poisoning, poisoning Americans for their own profit. To share one devastating story uh, from my home state of Maryland, uh, a young a young lady, uh, Trinity Ripley, lost her life to accidental fentanyl overdose after consuming a counterfeit pill just before Christmas last year. Trinity was only 18 years old, uh, the daughter of Christine and Vaughn Ripley, who's a council member in the town of Brunswick in Frederick County in Western Maryland. Trinity died the first time she took an illicit pill of any kind. People like Trinity without an opioid tolerance face even greater risks of succumbing to a fentanyl overdose. Her father has spoken about, her, to, had spoken to her about these safety issues and the challenge with peer pressure. In his advocacy on these issues, Mr. Ripley has said, quote, the thing that drives me nuts is that one pill can kill. And now he worries about Trinity's younger brother, Xander, potentially facing uh, the same threat. Mr. Yosin, in 2021, the DEA launched the One Pill Can Kill enforcement effort and public awareness campaign. Can you talk about what specific strategies that state and local law enforcement agencies are using that are, in your view, most effective? Uh, and unfortunately, uh, the, the there are a whole lot of trinities out there, uh, and you're right. One pill, one pill can kill, and we're seeing it over and over and over. Um, I, you know, in a law enforcement standpoint, you know, we we're, we're putting band aids on problems uh, because of, there's just so much uh, activity uh, taking place. Um, there are really a couple of facets that I, you know, we, we haven't talked, we talked a little bit about it, but there's another facet too. You know, it certainly shouldn't be at the expense or, or, or taken away from the enforcement side of it, but it's programs like this that, that are going to, um, you know, we've got, we're talking about the suppliers and really a lot of this legislation is geared strictly for, you know, towards the, you know, those that are manufacturing, those are bringing it in. And the reality is, is we really need to, to focus on the other side of this as well, uh, how it's affecting our communities and, 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 and how it's affecting families and, and the education portion, portion part of it as, as well. Uh, thank you. And um, Mr. DeFord, I've been um, listening to your testimony from my office and all the testimony. Thank you um, for the powerful voice uh, you bring uh, to this crisis, uh, your experience, your voice, your music, not cut, ac cut across party lines. They bring people together rather than divide them. And as all of us know, nobody cares whether someone who's overdosed from fentanyl is a Democrat, Republican, or anything else. So thank you for your unifying force uh, in addressing this <clears throat> crisis. Um, you mentioned Baltimore City uh, being one of the epicenters of the fentanyl crisis, and that's um, our state of Maryland, like others, have not, has not escaped this, this scourge. If you could just say, based on your experience, whether there are any misconceptions that others have about the group of people who end up uh, using or dying from fentanyl, misconceptions that people have that could help us better address um, this crisis. Uh, thank you, sir. I want the record to reflect I'm an Orioles fan. All right. Um, I, um, I think Trinity's story is the main story that we can reference right now about the misunderstanding about drugs in America and about what fentanyl is doing, is that the drug addict is shifting, right, is that it's not always the drug addicts now. Sometimes it's just the young lady who took a pill the night before Christmas to maybe get sleep, maybe get the anxiety of Christmas off. I don't know Trinity's story, but I'm sure within my spirit, she didn't take that pill to lose her life. And I think that this, um, excuse my language, but I speak very bluntly, the days of doing cocaine in the bathroom with a stranger are long behind us. Um, my wife and I don't even trust Tylenols that have been opened now. 
that's how scary of a place we live in. And I think that the biggest misconception about this is that if it hasn't already ended up in your home and you're listening to this thinking it never will, you are wrong. It is on its way to your living room. And I suggest that we stand up and do more as fast as we possibly can. Thank you for that important message to everybody. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Senator Daines of Montana.